Over 2.3 million cars produced in 2009-2010. Over 15 car manufacturers producing 80 and more models. Largest exporter of small cars in the world. Largest manufacturer of tractors in the world with over 4.33 lakh units produced during 2009-2010. Second largest producer of two wheelers in the world with over 10.5 million units produced during 2009-2010. Fourth largest producer of automobiles in the world with over 14 million units. A key growth driver of the economy, the automotive industry is expected to grow to 145 billion US dollars, 10% of the national GDP by 2016, providing direct and indirect employment to about 25 million people. The per capita income in India having reached the magical figure of $1,000. The automotive sector is now poised to witness exponential growth, as has been the case in most developed countries. India's automotive component sector has been instrumental in driving this unprecedented expansion of the automobile industry. Today, India has emerged as a preferred sourcing destination for automobile components by major OEs and vehicle manufacturers across the world. In March 2010, the turnover of automotive component industry stood at 21 billion US dollars and exports at 3.8 billion US dollars. Global OEMs and Taiwan companies sourced 80% of the exports from India. The Indian automotive component manufacturers have embraced quality enhancements in a big way, which is evident from the fact that the entire membership of ACMA have achieved various quality system certifications. In fact, the component industry is the only sector in India with 11 Deming Prize winners, considered to be one of the most coveted quality awards worldwide. India is fast developing into a much sought-after product development hub with several global automotive companies setting up their development centers in the country. Further, with its frugal engineering capabilities and the availability of a large base of highly skilled technical manpower, India has become the hub for small car production. The first cars made their appearance on Indian roads in 1897 and soon after, a number of cars and trucks were imported. However, during those times, the automobile was still regarded to be the devil's own contraption and many were reluctant to even take a ride on a bus. Eventually, Ford and General Motors set up local companies to do business in motor cars and trucks in the country. The first car came off the General Motors assembly line in 1928 from Mumbai. Leaders like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Vishveshwaraya played a pivotal role in encouraging the development of the Indian automotive industry. As times changed, industry developed the capability to take on new challenges. India's first car rolled out of the gates of Premier Automobiles, Mumbai, in 1947. Close on its heels, Hindustan Motors began its production of the iconic Ambassador in 1948 from Kolkata. Eager to develop a self-sufficient automotive industry, a number of component companies were established to service this growing demand. Thus, the first seeds towards a self-sufficient automotive industry in India were sown. As the sector grew, there was felt a need to form an association to address the various issues confronting industry and to shape its future development. With this aim, the All India Automobile and Ancillary Industries Association, AIA and AIA, was formed in 1959. The role ACMA played in the 60s, in 66-67, is very unique because it had taken the initiative of volunteering to export 10% of its production. 
it's no exaggeration by 1960 india can could boast the privilege of making every component that goes into a car truck industrial engine tractor and two wheelers this is a remarkable progress by any standard as the ancillary industry developed the association steered the industry towards reaching higher production volumes improving quality and expanding exports while existing vehicle manufacturers had achieved high levels of indigenization under the phased manufacturing program and the growth of the ancillary industry had gained momentum the number of vehicle manufacturers across the different categories continued to be restricted capacity was licensed and price of vehicles were also controlled by the government the focus at the time was on producing vehicles for public transport tractors commercial vehicles and vehicles for defense purposes with only three passenger car manufacturers the gap between demand and supply was huge with waiting periods going into several years owning a car was a privilege restricted to the elite in india however as india's population was growing there was ample demand for a fuel efficient passenger car with an affordable means to change this scenario and create a mass market the government was keen to kickstart a car project and this led to the setting up of maruti udyog to manufacture a people's car we were required to make 100000 cars in 5 years we had to attain over 90% local content within 5 years and we had a cost target to meet so that the cars would sell in this number when we started there was not one single component of the maruti 800 which is actually available in india so we were starting from a really zero base and to get this whole picture together we decided that the only way we could do that was if we started to treat vendors as our partners and partners who saw that their growth and their prosperity would be linked to that of maruti and i must say that the component industry once they saw that maruti was actually going to make 100000 cars and was going to survive and not go under as was expected when we started responded very well the advent of maruti significantly impacted indian industry helping the manufacturing sector break away from the vicious cycle of low volume and high cost placing greater emphasis on quality than ever before maruti or suzuki brought a lot of technology not so much focused on engine and uh, transmission as on the vehicle body the trim the interiors the air conditioning so many aspects which were missing in earlier vehicles to give the customer a better ride lesser noise vibration harshness easier entry and exit all these were built into this new generation automobile the collaboration between maruti and suzuki was further considered to be a pace setter for increasing indo japanese cooperation in the industry and was seen as the first steps made towards liberalization of the economy hero cycles private limited which entered into a joint venture agreement with honda motor company of japan around the same time has today gone on to take the number one spot in the world in terms of manufacture of motorcycles given the changing face of the indian automotive industry the executive committee of the aia and the aia felt the need to change the name of the association to give it a new perspective thus aia and aia was rechristened acma automotive component manufacturers association of india in june 1983 the role of acma is to promote sustainable and profitable growth of the component industry in india acma engages with oems in india understands their concerns their expectations what they see as the changes in the marketplace for which the component makers must get ready also carries to the oems the concerns 
and issues engaging the mind of the, the component makers and thereby promotes open communication and dialogue which leads to a healthy interaction and understanding of each other's position. In 1986, ACMA and the Association of Indian Automobile Manufacturers completed 25 glorious years of service to the industry. And to commemorate the occasion, it jointly organized India's first ever auto expo. Held in Delhi, the event symbolized the industry's enthusiasm and determination to create a vibrant and robust automotive industry in the country. With the growing linkages between Indian automotive component players and the global industry, along with quality improvements, the need to continually develop and improve technology was becoming more and more relevant. Realizing the emergence of this trend and its importance, ACMA Center for Technology ACT was formed in 1989 over the years, ACT has introduced several services and a variety of programs aimed at bringing about quality and productivity improvements. In the 90s, India began its historic transition into an open, dynamic and globally competitive economy. The government de-licensed the motor car industry and sought the participation of multinationals. With the introduction of the open door policy, foreign investors were granted automatic approvals for up to 51% equity in Indian companies. The liberalization also opened up competition, uh, both in the vehicle industry and in the component industry. And that further kind of uh, made it imperative for the industry to mature and uh, start uh, looking at global standards in terms of uh, performance. For the first time the auto market became a buyer's market. There was more choice for consumers and manufacturers had to compete with each other to sell. The Automotive Component Manufacturers Association was focused on getting their members to start the quality journey so that they could uh, meet customer expectations, come up to world standards of quality. And ACMA is also focused on getting multinational players to understand the opportunities available in India and also the status of the component industry that it was uh, having a ready-made supply chain for their investments and growth in the country. By 1993, the automotive component industry was exporting over 13% of its output, covering a range of high-value products. The phased manufacturing program had given way to a localization policy under which within three years of operations, vehicle manufacturers were to achieve an indigenization level of 50% and 70% within five years. As the 90s progressed, the dream run that started with de-licensing of the automotive sector was interrupted by high fuel prices, high cost of capital, poor availability of funds, and political instability in the country. Not to be bogged down by hostile environment, the industry in its quest for survival focused its attention on improving quality, productivity and in becoming leaner. These proactive initiatives made the automotive industry perfectly poised to ride the next growth curve as the economy subsequently pulled out of recession. This indus industry has withstood one way that it has been able to cater to very diverse technologies, Korean, Japanese, American, European, and in European, again, individual countries. And for two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and uh, cars and trucks, and it has been able to satisfy the manufacturers with almost 95-98% of local content. In order to improve the customer base, exports were given high priority. A number of initiatives were introduced to encourage exports and by the mid-90s, the level of exports crossed the rupees 1,000 crore mark. So if you got a Deming Award or if you had a TPM Excellence Award or a TKM Award, the foreign manufacturers uh, took it for granted that you know all the, um, the requirements of uh, producing a quality part. I think this, the auto component industry uh, sort of plunged into it wholeheartedly because it helped them uh, to achieve that kind of visibility 
in uh, the eyes of the customers. And these awards went to strengthen the image of uh, not only the auto component industry, but also the image of India. Further, aware of the need to continually build the industry's image locally as well as internationally, ACMA focused on activities such as participation in specialized shows, interacting with OEMs and leading aftermarket buyers, interactions with visiting business delegations and international agencies. These interactions facilitated open communication and were integral to the industry's transition. So we work very, very closely with the vendors. We have never seen a day when the motorcycles have not gone out for, and they have not been produced because for the want of any component coming from vendors. No. While the automotive industry in the 90s saw a burst of activities across the entire value chain, fueled by the opening up of the Indian economy, the next decade marked the transformation of the industry into one of considerable global standing. From an attitude of why India, the global sentiment has now changed to not without India. In 2001, after 50 years of import restrictions, the vehicle industry was thrown open to global competition with the lifting of all import restrictions on new and second-hand vehicles. The MOU policy was also done away with in 2001 and along with it, the localization norms and export obligations. ACT, on its part, initiated a cluster approach. Group of companies were brought together and taken through a set roadmap of process improvement. The uh, basic idea came from Professor Sudasan Tikiam Initiative, which was organized by uh, Maruti, and which had a cluster of companies. And uh, that's how it, the whole thing started. Then we uh, said we said we'll interview companies, and wherever the CMD is involved, only then it will work. So we interviewed the company, interviewed the managers, interviewed the companies, and uh, it was a very very tight uh, selection process. And we got only about 14 companies, and the charge was uh, five lakhs a year. And uh, I understand they recovered that five lakhs within three months of the cluster program. Further, with a number of improvements having been brought about, the cluster program is the talk of the industry, both in India and abroad. In 2002, the government allowed 100% foreign direct investment through automatic route. As the vehicle volumes increased, so did the automotive component industry. It grew at 20% despite the continual increase in prices of raw materials and inputs. Investments in capacity and improvements in productivity were beginning to bring in rewards. In 2003, exports grew by 30% and crossed the 1 billion US dollar mark. However, global volatility began to severely affect the Indian industry in 2006-2007. In spite of the market forces working to slow down the growth momentum, the Indian automotive industry surged ahead with high-level technological partnerships through global joint ventures, mergers and acquisitions not only for product development but also product design and testing. It was during this time the government announced the Automotive Mission Plan AMP, a 10-year roadmap for the Indian automotive industry. AMP is, the, is a monumental work and it's the best example that you can think of for, uh, for symbolizing the synergy between the government and the industry. That you know the mechanism which the AMP has set forth for both the government and for the industry will go a long way in achieving what we want to achieve. And I have no doubt that industry will contribute hugely to this effort of India becoming a hub for automotive sector. The AMP has been of great assistance and a beacon to industry, government and the various ministries. We are committed in ACMA to perform and to see that this vision 2021 is definitely completed by the year 2016. 20 billion of exports, 20 billion of domestic market and 1 million of additional 
jobs created by 2016. The global endorsement to the industry's innovation quotient came when Tata Motors launched the Nano, the rupees 1 lakh people's car in 2008, a first for the global automobile industry. With 37 patents, the Nano is a testament to India's metal in small car innovation and production. Component companies in India can boast themselves that they are the fastest to deliver the product from the concept to the, on the drawing board to the finished product. And that was a major role ACMA played in to support the auto component industry. The year 2008 also witnessed the most powerful economies of the world going into recession and the global automotive industry was faced with one of its toughest crises ever. Arising to the challenge, the government of India reacted proactively and announced stimulus packages which were aimed at increasing liquidity, reducing the cost of finance, reducing duties and taxes, enhancing depreciation of commercial vehicles, enhanced export incentives and more flexible lending policies. Industry responded positively to these measures and by mid-2009, the automotive industry was back to business as usual. The prowess of the Indian automotive sector is showcased in the Biennial Auto Expo, a truly international platform to showcase the capabilities of the Indian auto sector. With a modest beginning with just over 100 companies at the first expo in 1986, the Auto Expo 2010 had 2,100 exhibitors and the largest ever international participation comprising 800 exhibitors and 98 delegations from 38 countries. It would be amiss to not acknowledge the significant contribution of the Government of India and some of our state governments in the development of the auto sector in the country. ACMA and the government work in tandem to promote investments. R&D, skill development and other areas crucial for the growth and development of the sector. ACMA has also started a program on new product development and R&D with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, to build expertise across member companies. So what does the future hold? During the last 50 years of this industry's growth, I've seen it grow from a simple screwdriver kind of situation to a totally global scenario today. If a company does not become global, especially the vehicle manufacturer, but also the component manufacturer, I think his future will be a little dimmer as compared to those who, of course, meet the domestic demand uh, and also export. Today, it is primarily what you know about your business which is going to guarantee success. No longer are your connections helpful, certainly not in the automotive industry. A synergy of the technology which is in existence in the West, remodeled and innovatively done with the frugal engineering of India, would be the next way forward. I must say that of all the industry segments in India, this is the best managed sector in Indian economy. And I think they have learned to manage it well and globally competitive. I've always seen whenever there has been volume, the industry has performed better, not only in terms of profits, but in terms of improving the technology and quality and then they will be truly a global company which can match anywhere in the world. Minimum, I think our headroom to grow is 200%. In cars, again, we have one-fourth of China. So I think the headroom for the auto industry in India, and particularly with the better and better interior roads, trucks will also grow. So 
India for the present seems to have an infinite growth prospect for the future. The year 2010 is the year where we are standing at crossroads, uh, where we are poised into something much bigger uh, going forward in the next decade, uh, with uh, the Western world knowing and understanding that we need to minimize the carbon footprint, uh, we need to conserve fossil fuels. The technologies that are going to be built around these areas are what are going to drive the auto component industry uh, along with the auto industry to be able to take us into the future. As we surge ahead into the future, the auto industry will be the engine of growth for our nation. The automobile continues to bring about unimaginable transformation in our lives as it did from the moment it first went snorting forth. Vehicles have undeniably shaped the social, economic, political and military history of the world. Whatever the future turns out to be, cars flying in the air to traveling underwater, to automatic tractors to bikes and buses fueled by water or atmospheric air, the automobile and the automotive component manufacturers will have to increasingly invest and work together to meet the growing technological challenges to ensure that the growth achieved is profitable, responsible and sustainable over the long run. Let's join hands towards making India the global hub of the auto industry.